Shoot the game long enough and you realize that there are really only two different types of people who play the game. Those that have committed every penalty in the rulebook and those that just haven't been shooting long enough to do that yet. Hi, I'm Branch Warner Jack and today we're looking at a situation that we hope never happens but has happened to even the best of us here on the firing line. when you least expect it. You find yourself having a great run, and then your gun ends up somewhere other than where you intended it. So this week, we're going to talk about some situations dealing with dropped firearms. The first one we're going to talk about today is the easiest one to understand. It's the most serious of conditions that we can have. We're going to talk about a dropped loaded firearm. Any dropped loaded firearm will result in a match disqualification penalty assessment. A shooter should not be allowed to pick up a dropped firearm. The CRO, TO, should recover the firearm, examine it, clear it if necessary, return it to the shooter, and assess the appropriate penalty. This does not apply to holstered revolvers that remain in leather in the event of an equipment failure. For example, a broken belt buckle causing the gun belt or ammo belt to fall. Shooter may safely recover a fallen gun, ammo belt, and continue finishing the stage without penalty, or wait until finishing the stage for retrieval. Dropped firearm. A firearm that has left the shooter's control and comes to rest at a location or position other than where it was intended. There are a couple immediate takeaways from this. First, a firearm does not have to hit dirt to be considered dropped. By definition, it must leave the shooter's control and come to rest at a location or position other than where it was intended. One great example of this concerns a shooter who draws their loaded pistol from leather in order to engage a target string, loses grip of that revolver, and the revolver lands on the table. Even though the pistol landed on a table or a prop and didn't make its way all the way to the dirt, this situation meets the requirements for a match to hue. However, this should not be confused with a competitor who intentionally stages their loaded pistol on a table or prop for whatever reason. Second, the pistol that remains in leather is not considered dropped in the event of an equipment failure where the pistol and holsters both separate from the competitor. Things get a little bit more complicated, however, when dealing with an unloaded firearm. Any unloaded firearm dropped during a stage will result in a stage disqualification penalty assessment. This does not apply to holstered revolvers that remain in leather in the event of an equipment failure. For example, broken belt buckle, causing the gun belt or ammo belt to fall. Shooter may safely recover a fallen gun or ammo belt and continue finishing the stage without penalty or wait until finishing the stage for retrieval. Stage DQ penalty includes any dropped unloaded firearm on the firing line. Stage DQ penalty includes long guns that slip, fall, and break the 170. So what does all this mean anyway? First, let's talk about when and where this specifically applies. By rule, we're dealing with incidents with unloaded firearms on the firing line. So, how do we differentiate between loaded and unloaded firearms, and where is the firing line? Loaded firearm. Any firearm with unfired round or rounds in the action, chamber, or magazine. Firing line. From first firearm place on the loading table until all firearms are confirmed as cleared at the unloading table. So if the firearm has any unfired rounds in it, including rounds that failed to fire, it is still considered loaded and will carry with it the more severe match DQ penalty. It's also important to understand that penalties concerning dropped unloaded firearms only apply on the firing line. That is, from the time after the first firearm is placed on the loading table until all firearms are confirmed as cleared at the unloading table. So while there are safety concerns when dealing with a cart that falls over, spilling a competitor's guns on the ground, in that instance, there is not a penalty to be scored for a dropped gun. 
Further, if a competitor drops an unloaded firearm before the first firearm is placed on the loading table or after all firearms are confirmed as clear at the unloading table, this is another situation where a no call is warranted. This is why you're going to see me at the unloading table get into a specific order when clearing my own firearms. I clear long guns first, then I clear one pistol setting it on the unloading table, and then I clear my second pistol. After all my guns have been confirmed as cleared, that is when I'll reholster both my pistols. I reholster pistols after all of my guns are confirmed as cleared as I am technically clear of the firing line. This way, if I'm bumped into or I have an issue while attempting to get a pistol and leather, I don't have to worry about additional penalty. Which brings me to another point. One of the more common things that I see that causes these type of issues, specifically at the loading table, is when folks crowd each other. When someone is at the loading table, we need to give them enough room to be able to do their work. It is a tough penalty to call when someone is loading their own guns and is bumped into by their neighbor who's trying to shuffle up and stuff all their stuff onto the loading table. And that competitor ends up dropping a firearm. The final bit of confusion folks will have is differentiating between a long gun that is dropped and a long gun that slips and falls. Minor safety penalty includes open, empty long guns that slip and fall but do not break the 170 safety rule or sweep anyone. So a long gun that is dropped is a stage DQ, while one that slips and falls and does not break the 170 is a minor safety. So when does a long gun slip and fall and when is it dropped? There is a difference and it comes down to an issue of continuous motion. If a shooter discards a long gun after use and it is at complete rest, even for a brief moment, then it slips and falls without breaking the 170, then this would be a minor safety. Conversely, if a shooter discards a long gun after use and it remains in continuous motion or is bumped and made to fall by the shooter and it comes to rest at a location or position other than where it was intended, this is when a stage DQ would apply. So, while I hope that you haven't had to experience any of these issues before or anytime soon, I realize that they can happen to us at any time, to you as a shooter or to someone else while you're acting as their RO. And now, hopefully, you'll be able to handle them appropriately when they do happen here on the firing line. Mm -hmm.